Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Thanks for checking in. Today we're going to be talking about the DAR Gen 2 from Dynamic Air Rifles. So, stick around. Before we take off on our hunting adventure, let's talk a little bit about the gun. You've had a chance to see how it performs across the bench. Now, keep in mind, that was cold weather that was up in the mountains. We were up at about 5,500 feet. The temps that night had been probably in the high 20s. And by the time we were filming, it was in the high 40s. And to get velocities of 882, and get around 44 foot-pounds of energy, that was just amazing. Now, keep in mind that as you come down in elevation, as it warms up, I'm gonna guess that you're gonna get better velocities and a little bit higher foot-pounds of energy. Now, folks are gonna say, well, PCPs really don't change that much. Well, yes and no. We fill our air guns and you're not gonna get all the moisture out of the air that's going in your gun. With that, when we're at elevation, when we're in the cold, that moisture is gonna condense and it's gonna bring your fill pressure down a little bit and it may affect one, your shot count and your velocities. That's why I was amazed when we got in the 880s with this gun and it was 40 something degrees out. It was just, it blew my mind how this gun performs. Now, one thing I really, liked about this gun was that they have a cap over the fill port and the gun does come with a probe a lot of guns that i test unfortunately don't have a cap that covers that now if i could think of one improvement to this gun right off the bat I would make a detent to where this cap maybe just slid that far up. Because if you're like me, if you're going through the brush, you're going through the woods, 
things are going to happen and that cap eventually could fall off. But it's a nice interference fit. It keeps all the nasties out of the fill port, which is going to keep them out of the reservoir. Folks are going to ask me, John, is the gun regulated? Well, yes it is. It has an internal regulator. Now, the first thing folks usually want to do is start tinkering around with their gear and adjusting things. Offhand, I'm not sure if this has an adjustable regulator, but my advice to you is this. The factory sets up these guns to perform a certain way. My advice is to just leave it alone and have fun with it. This gun is shooting great. Like I've talked about, it's shooting an average of 880 feet per second with a 25 caliber pellet. We're getting about 44 foot pounds. That is more than enough for jackrabbits, small game. You're gonna go out and have fun. Just leave it alone and have fun. Now, let's talk about the trigger. The trigger has an adjustable uh, setting on there. And if I was gonna just do one thing to this gun, it would be just to set it up for your shooting style. Now, if you're hunting and you're shooting off the bench, the trigger pull is gonna vary a little bit. If you're walking around in the woods, I'm not sure you're gonna want a pound and a half trigger pull. But if you're shooting off a bench, yeah, you're gonna want that. So, what I like is, they put in the instruction manual how to adjust the trigger pull. I thought that was great. So, what we did was, we dialed it down a little bit, got the trigger a little bit softer, and as you can see in the video, I was shooting about 63, 64 yards on that reactive target, and that two-stage trigger, over the course of the three days where I was shooting probably about 150, 200 pellets, trigger started getting really smooth and things just started setting in really nice. Has a steel breech with a side lever. I really like this action. I was surprised how smooth this gun was. Now, I've shot guns that are in the $500 range into the $1,000 range, and this gun is just as smooth as those guns. Now, has a little magnet that's in the side that secures that lever. I walked around in the sagebrush, in the manzanita. We were bushwhacking for days. Came home, went to my local mountains, did a hunt. I was bushwhacking there as well, had no issue with the lever coming loose, sliding back, opening up. It cycled really well, paired up with the magazine, had no problem at all with feeding pellets and for them seating in the breech. It worked really fine. Folks are gonna ask me about optics and this isn't a review on the optics, I'll do a separate review because I was really impressed with this scope. This scope is an Ames Sport Alpha 6, and it's a 4.5 by 27 and a 50 millimeter. This scope is a nice piece of glass, and it deserves its own review. You'll get a chance to see some Tacticam footage of this scope. I think you're going to be really impressed. That's all I got to say about that. Look for a video on this scope coming soon. I get to test out a lot of air guns. And I'm going to tell you right now. In that $300 price range, where are you going to get, on a pre-charged pneumatic rifle, mind you, a beautiful stock like this? Now. I got a little bit of NASCAR damage on there. I was out in the woods and stuff's gonna happen. I had my gun on shooting sticks and I was taking a break and this gust of wind blew through probably 30, 40 miles an hour and knocked the gun off the shooting sticks. We were on a hilltop and the gun rolled probably six or eight feet down a hill. Well, I was one, 
concerned about the gun because we're doing a review, right? But two, I was concerned about the optics because we were up on this rocky sandy hill. Things were blown around and this tumbled. We got back to camp. Dana threw it on the bench and it stayed true. It was right on zero. So had no problem with that. So you're going to see a little NASCAR on there. That was me. That wasn't the factory. Things are going to happen. We do real world testing here. But ergonomics, the gun shoulders really nice. And I like the old school knurling and checkering on the side. Reminds me of the guns like um, my grandfather or my dad used to carry in the 60s when we used to go out, you know, hunting rabbits, hunting coyotes and stuff like that back in the day. It just shouldered really nice. The comb on the uh, stock, it indexes my cheek well. Really nice. So a lot of times there was one shot I had on a, a ground squirrel that you're going to see on this video where I had to pull up really quick and it was just indexed right then. Just great ergonomics on the stock and it looks really nice. Now let's talk about the fill pressure, the size of the reservoir, and the shot count. First off, fill pressure. You can fill up to 3000 PSI and that's a good thing. If you have access to an air compressor, not a problem. If you don't have access to that, you can fill it up with a high pressure air pump. It's gonna take you a while. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not gonna say that it's gonna be 50 pumps, but you can get it back up. If, if you keep it in that 3000 range and refill somewhere around 1800-ish, it might take you, 100 pumps to get it back up and back in the game. So if you don't have access to a air compressor, let not your heart be troubled. A hand pump will fill this gun up no problem at all. Now, 250 cc reservoir, I feel that's perfect for the size and weight of this gun. Keep in mind, it's designed as a hunting gun. If you're gonna be carrying around in the woods, in the field, Anything else, as far as size and weight constraints, it's going to start weighing on you over the course of hours and days that you're out in the field. So I believe for this setup, that is the best combo. Now, shot count. We were up at elevation, and it was cold. I was getting about two and a half magazines, which was about 25 shots before I had to do a refill. I'm going to test it out later on when it gets warmer down here in San Diego and we'll see what the max amount of shots that I can get. We'll do a long-term review on this in a couple months and uh, see how it's holding up for you guys. But right now you're getting about 25 really good hard-hitting shots. If you're out there hunting small game, I mean, you're going to be able to hunt all day long unless you're on just some really ground squirrel infested environment. And then you have a pony bottle or some form, your pump, you're still in the game. Let's talk about size and weight. The gun without the optics weighs 6.7 pounds and it is 40 inches long. Perfect size for me. And I'm, I'm a short guy, I'm 5'6". So, if I get with an uber long gun, now it becomes an issue for me to get through manzanita groves, to get through sagebrush, to get through chaparral and all that area. So 40 inch, its shoulders really nice, it's well balanced, and I'm able to get through the scrub with no problem at all. Well, that was enough jabber John on specs. Let's get out in the field and let me show you how this gun performs. Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. I'm with Dana from Mountain Sports Air Guns. We're back at it again. If you guys follow along on the channel a couple months ago, Dana and I and my relative Nick, we all got together. Well, the stars aligned and we were able to get out again. We're um, 
in the mountains at elevation. So it's going to get a little bit chilly tonight. We're out here um, jackrabbit hunting, cottontail hunting. And I brought a coyote call. Maybe we'll uh, see something there. We'll keep our fingers crossed. And then Dana, on one of his recent trips out here, found an interesting item that we're going to show you guys later on. So you're going to want to stick around. We're out on an evening rabbit hunt right now. Coming down into the lowland before it gets dark. Up here in the mountains, it'll get dark early. So hopefully we'll see a little bit of something out here. So day one, we kind of got carried away right off the bat. So we didn't film a lot of air gun footage. We got into camp, had to sight in the guns. Then we went out on a little recon mission. And then one thing led to another, you know, we were checking out the bunker, trying to get our game plan of what we're going to do this evening. So definitely tomorrow we're going to be out. Uh, we saw one cottontail later on this afternoon. We were practically like standing on it. And then the rest of the day, unfortunately, we didn't see anything. We saw a lot of sign, a lot of fresh scat, a lot of tracks, a lot of cougar tracks in and around this area. Now, I've been in the woods quite a bit, my stomping grounds, and every once in a while, you'll see a track. But here, there was tracks everywhere. It's like a super highway. So one cat is just sweeping this area uh, back and forth. It has to be because there, there was tracks. We went that way, that way, that way. There was tracks all over the place. It was just nuts. But uh, tomorrow, Dana has friend Terry coming up. It's no stranger to his channel. It's going to be the first time I met meet up with uh, Terry. And... Uh, we're going to shoot some guns off the bench. We're going to have a good time and uh, give you an update tomorrow morning on uh, day two. Stick around. Good morning, folks. Quick update. Right now it's uh, 745 and it's 30 degrees. Last night it was down in the mid-20s camping out here in the Forerunner. So this morning we're making a family tradition of mine, chorizo con huevo. So we have chorizo. Later on we'll put some scrambled eggs, a little bit of cheese, and then we toast the tortilla. And then we have a great breakfast out here in the woods. All right, let's do the reveal. Chorizo con huevo. Then we're going to heat up a tortilla, put a little cheese on it. It's really good. So we're back out in the woods today. I'm running the Dar Gen 2 25 cal. Seeing a little bit of activity already, some squirrels. So hopefully we'll be able to catch something on camera for you guys. But it's just a beautiful day right now. So day two, we're out here with the crew. We got Terry, the off-hand air gunner in the house, and then Dana. So the hunt's officially begun. We've seen a couple cottontails. We weren't able to get shots off and uh, a couple ground squirrels, but uh, there's a lot of activity out here. We've seen a lot of deer sign, a lot of cougar sign, and then we saw fresh coyote scat. So we're in this beautiful area our little undisclosed honey hole out here. It's just beautiful area, so come along. My hunting's been hard out here. There's a ton of sign. 
everywhere. Just sign everywhere. But it's been slim pickings. I don't know if it's the cold. I don't know. But there's just a ton of sign everywhere. We've only seen just a handful of rabbits. I'm hoping to catch something on video for you guys. So, come on, let's go. So, I've been carrying the dar for a couple days now out here on this hunting trip. And you can tell a lot about a gun just by carrying it in the woods for hours upon hours. And we've been like traipsing over hill through brush. And I get a chance to review and test a lot of guns. And this one has been very ergonomic, well balanced to carry its shoulders really well. And I'm just hoping that I can get some small game on video for you guys just to see how well this gun shoots. So let's get back at it. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, harvest something for you guys. One thing you learn when you're out cold weather camping is that you eat before sundown and you eat while it's hot. So what we're doing now is cleaning up camp. Dana's getting some extra wood ready for tonight because last night we blew through our bundle of wood in no time, but it was comfortable in that bunker. So we're getting prepped because as you can see, the sun's starting to go down. And as with that in the mountains, it's gonna get cold quick. So stick around. So night number two from the bunker, we got the wood stove going. We're rationing the wood tonight. We're not getting too crazy. Let's do a quick temp check. 59 degrees in the bunker, and it's going to drop down in the low 30s, maybe even the high 20s again outside tonight. So Dana's got his lights set up. We're just going to kick back and relax, have some coffee, tell some stories, and just have some fun. So I'm out this morning, starting to get some storm clouds rolling in. They're talking about possible rain today. Here's our shooting lane. We've been target practicing. Check this out. This happened between the time we went to the bunker and cooking dinner. A coyote came in our camp. So I'm going to go for a walk. Got to be careful what I show. I don't want to give away our place. But here's the bunker that we've been kicking back in at night. That's just been a savior for us. Keeping us warm. Dana put a blanket over the door. And that really kept the heat in that bunker. But uh, it's been a fun time out here. It's been a pretty productive couple days. Met up with some really cool folks. Got to test out some really cool air guns. And hunting's always a gamble. It's no guarantee. We don't go out there expecting to uh, harvest something every time that we go. We do it more for the camaraderie, the camping, the good stories, and just creating great memories. And that's pretty much the essence of why I do air guns and traditional archery and such. I just love the community. It's a good bunch of folks and people are willing to help you in your journey morning folks i'm out at a different location right now with the door i'm bunkered down i'm about 72 73 yards away took a shot on a big old fatty ground squirrel just barely missed him hopefully i caught it on the uh tacticam for you guys i'll share it with you right now great morning Santa Ana winds are starting to kick up, so hopefully we'll see some more activity as it's starting to warm up a bit out here. Just a beautiful day. Here's a cool find. Got 
two giant oaks with just this nice brushed out natural blind canopy overlooking a great area. This is just getting off the beaten path and just exploring. I lean my gun up against a tree and without looking, it's just crawling with fire ants. Lesson learned, folks. You gotta watch out on these warmer days out here in the back country. Things are moving. You have to be careful. This place is just overgrown with poison oak. But it's just beautiful area to explore. Well, from the tactic cam footage, we had a good solid hit. These squirrels are tough. They can get down underneath stuff, wounded and pass away. They'll even make it down into their burrow. But I'm not gonna get in this uh, poison oak that doesn't have any leaves on it. Just not worth it for a confirmation. So we're gonna consider that a uh, harvest. All sorts of sharp things that can bite you out here. The kumii used to use these as needle and thread. You could pull that sharp point out and there was long, really durable hair-like material in there that you could use for sewing leather together, maybe even first aid back in the day. But out here right now, man, it'll just poke you and it hurts. Okay, got him. All right, here it is, folks. Second squirrel of the day. We got confirmation on this one. Big old fatty from about 40, 45 yards. I was walking along in the shadows around the fringe of the uh, field and he was perched up on a rock saw a little bit of movement and he uh ducked down stuck his head up just enough to uh give me a target and i took it all right having fun with this dar gen 2 awesome shooter Hundred and thirty two yards. I'm sighted in for about sixty seven. So I'm gonna hold two dots and see what happens. I think I overshot him. Well, I took a poke at one. It was around a buck thirty two. So I'm thinking I'm sighted in for 65 66 yards that i'd probably go two mil dots over thinking the distance while i overshot him so this this gun's shooting pretty flat with these pellets these jsbs i'm i'm really happy with the performance so far and i'm just starting to get used to this gun too it takes a while i've only maybe have 100 pellets through it so we're going to keep on it and uh, hopefully we'll have some action for you. 132, we came back out again. This time we're going dead on. <laughs> well, I made it over to the rock where I think I poked him. These ground squirrels are tough. They'll get down into their burrow and uh, 
they'll pass on there. Or I've even seen other ground squirrels pull them down. They're like cannibalistic at that point and just take them down in. So they're, they're tough critters. If you come out here and think it's going to be easy peasy, they're going to make you work for it, but it's fun. Now for some final thoughts on the Dynamic Air Rifle DAR Gen 2 in the 25 caliber. First off, I have to do a disclaimer. I am not a salesman. I have no skin in the game with this review. I'm just out hard testing stuff because we need to find out if things are going to perform out in the field as advertised. And you folks work hard for your money. So with that, I kept that in mind as I went out in the field and we did hard use. We went over hills, we went down into valleys, the gun fell over a couple times. I mean, we got a little NASCAR on there. Scope stayed true, gun still looking great. The gun in this price range is outstanding. Now, I have a chance to review a lot of gear on this channel. This gun performs as equal to or greater than guns that are two times or three times the amount that this gun sells for. It's just amazing. What I was really amazed by this gun is the accuracy of it. This thing is just a tack driver. And keep in mind, when we did the initial chronic test, we're at elevation. We were at 5,500 feet, temperatures in the high 40s, and we're still cranking out 880 feet per second on average, around 44 foot-pounds. That's outstanding. Given the fact that we have an adjustable trigger on here, the stock is just really ergo. It's just made for, for hunting, getting out in the woods, you're squirrel hunting, you're rabbit hunting, you're doing whatever. And like that one shot that I had on that squirrel, I just, I had to pull up really quick the gun index perfect, and I was able to ethically harvest that ground squirrel with no problem. This gun with the 10 shot rotary mag in this caliber, a side lever, it's, it's just outstanding. Now, I'm just showing you the capabilities and the specs of this gun. And with that, I hope you can make your best informed decision on how you're going to spend your hard-earned money. With that, I feel this gun right here is a value. And this gun, I'm telling you, you're going to be hearing a lot more from Dynamic Air Rifles in the near future. They're doing its exciting things, and they're going places. And I can only imagine a year, two years, three years from now, how their guns are going to perform based on how this DAR Gen 2 operated. If you want to learn more about this air gun, I'll leave links to DAR's website in the video description below. With that, I sincerely thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending time with me on this video, and I look forward to sharing more videos with you in the near future. Take care, folks. Grab an air rifle, teach a kid how to shoot, and let's get them out enjoying the great outdoors like you and I love to do. Take care.